Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Petri Usikula, and I work as a, as a research director at the University of Vasa in the field of uh, complexity sciences and, and systems uh, thinking. That's a new, new area. But my role here today is to, to, to talk about the developmental evaluation, and I would say evaluation in general. And first of all, I would like to congratulate you all for setting up this program. It's very important to have a, a program like, like MOI at, at the European level and, and share all the, all the uh, good practices developed in, in, the, in the various member, member states of the European Union. Because this uh, impact is such an important thing for the museums and also finding the right tools to evaluate uh, the, the impact of museums. And I will say a few words about evaluation in, in general. I, I think Eva already uh, uh, mentioned some basic elements and then discuss what the, the developmental evaluation is and how it differs from traditional, let's say a more traditional positivistic evaluation that we are used in, I think, in many, many Nordic uh, countries as well. But let's start with the, with the general definition, just to make sure that we all understand what we're talking about. This is the one, there are, there are lots of different definitions for evaluations because it's a, it's a, not the, it's a, it's a very complex field of research also and a, and, and a complex field of development because there's no one single paradigm saying that you know the evaluation is this and you that's the way you how you how you do it but there are different uh, methodologies different uh, uh, premises for for doing evaluation but but as, as general it's a systematic assessment of the design uh, implementation and outcomes of an intervention uh, it involves understanding how an intervention is being or has been implemented and what effects it has for whom and why. And there are many important uh, concepts in this uh, definition, uh, but I would like to emphasize the, the two, two words actually, the effects and understanding. Because uh, time and again, we are, we are using uh, many different kinds of uh, you know, indicators, uh, reporting, the implementation of our activities or programs or projects without fully understanding what these indicators really tell us. And therefore it's important to have, at least to some extent, a kind of a theory of change uh, in, in your mind that you, you, when, you, when you're developing your, your uh, museum activities to have an understanding that which are the, the, the immediate uh, outputs or outcomes caused by, the, by your activities? And what, what is the overall impact or effectiveness in a longer period of time? And that is the understanding because otherwise we uh, face a situation called the black, black box syndrome. That we use, we, we use certain amount of resources and we get something out from the box, but we don't really understand the mechanism that has created the outcome and, and impacts. And it's, uh, it's impossible to learn if you don't have a faintest idea how, how the, the, the transformation process really takes place, what is causing what. And that's where the evaluation comes into picture, also trying to understand the, the, the complex uh, uh, mechanisms the causal linkages between certain activities. But that's another story. Let's move, move on. And there are different types of evaluations. One uh, uh, way of seeing evaluation is if, for example, if you have a project or program like MOI, to have an ex ante evaluation, be, even before the program starts, you can make an evaluation of the goals and objectives of the program and kind of a, a verify whether it's really worth uh, implementing is it is it you know strategically robust enough? Is there all elements in place? Is it feasible? Is it cost efficient? And so on and so on. And you can do that even before you start the whole program. And then typically the process evaluation or ex nunc 
evaluation, as it's called, uh, takes place during the implementation of the program. For example, there could be a team of experts evaluating the MOI project while you are implementing it. Or you can do it yourself, as Eva referred, the, the self-evaluation is, is a very good tool for learning, learning also. You don't have to have a necessarily external evaluators to do that job, but you can have a self-assessment or self-evaluation procedures in place which, uh, which are based on critical reflection of your activities. That during the implementation, you discuss, you try to find the uh, answer to the question that what works and why. And uh, I think it's a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, dichotomy that also Eva, Eva referred already to, to discuss uh, the, the, the question, are we doing things right? And that is a more, you know, positivistic, traditional, I would say even old fashioned way of seeing evaluation. There's a certain, you know, uh, a priori set norm or, or, or exact, uh, you know, procedure, how to implement things. And then you have, you know, a bunch of manuals and stuff and you try to follow the procedures and you have to, you try to avoid mistakes. And you are, you are, you are trying to do things right. But more and more, uh, the developers at the museum field also are, are emphasizing the latter one. Are we doing the right things? Are we really, you know, doing these uh, activities and these, uh, you know, uh, tasks that, that the museum should do? Or an organization like, uh, you know, the Finnish Heritage Agency or, or Finnish Museum Association thinking strategically, you know, what is our role in enhancing certain activities in the museum field? Are we doing the right thing? Are we, you know, really uh, able to, to create some added value? And these are more strategic things. And I think we need both, but we should not only emphasize the doing things, things right. And there are different kinds of, you know, other definitions, but we don't have time to go through all these, but I, I'm willing to share all this material for you afterwards. As said, either external evaluation, internal evaluation, referring to self-evaluation, self-assessment, or it can be also a peer re review type of evaluation, that one museum is evaluating an, another museum. That is a model that, that uh, the, the Finnish Heritage Agency and the Museums Association tried to test during the first pilot version of the, of the Finnish evaluation model, museum evaluation model. There were uh, strong elements of peer review embedded into that system, but for, for several reasons that has, that uh, emphasis has been uh, reduced to, uh, to a certain extent. But, you know, external, internal or peer review, three types of doing evaluation. And then let's go further. So one, okay, that's a MOI certain elements of impact, I will not, you can, you can have this slide afterwards and, and have a discussion, maybe in a small group, but we, we go further. There's one slide I would like to really discuss. There's a comparison between so-called traditional evaluation and developmental evaluation. I also have to skip this one because we don't really have time for comparing all, all these activities. And we also skip this, this one and we stay here. And now we have seven minutes left and I try to open this picture. It's probably difficult to see what's in it, but let's start at the macro level, being it, uh, you know, at the societal level, the government level, there's an attempt to, to, to develop or, or emphasize co-design or, or co-production practices. You know, all kinds of participatory uh, approaches to, to museum development. Let's say that you have a government uh, blue or white paper or green paper or policy guidelines or strategy or new law saying that museums should uh, emphasize more participatory approach. Okay, that is a strategic goal. And you expect to have new kinds of practices like co-design, co-production, museums doing uh, things together with, the, with their clients, with the citizens, with the, with the NGOs and so on, companies. But it doesn't work that way. And therefore in the, in the picture is called the impact fallacy. 
you you cannot really uh, derive the macro level outcomes or impacts from the macro level uh, uh, goals and objectives, but you have to follow the logic of macro, meso, and micro, micro level, and then come back to the macro. What it means in practice, it means that you, once you have introduced a new uh, set of policy guidelines, the critical transition is that whether the museums at the meso level, the meso refers to the organizational level, whether the museums really adopt these strategies and turn them into, into their own strategic thinking or, or strategy documents and, and, and so on, planning documents and so on. If not, nothing really changes if you have only a societal level policy goal, but no museum whatsoever uh, you know, really implements it. But once the museums start to implement, they, they start to make new kinds of strategies based on the government you know, guidelines, that is the first step. But then the next critical step is the micro level. Individual uh, uh, people uh, at the museums, the managers, uh, the, the, the museum workers, all stakeholders at the individual level need to uh, have some sort of, you know, awareness of what does that mean in practice? How I should do my, do, do my you know, work differently based on these new guidelines. And if, if, you, if you cannot have a change in the mind, mindset, let's put it that way, nothing really changes because then it stays at the organizational level and it really doesn't change the practices. But once you have awareness at, at the individual level, people start doing things differently. They start introducing the new practices in their everyday, uh, you know, working working uh, life. They start to do uh, things differently with the with the clients or stakeholders and so on. So little by little, at the individual level, the procedures start to change, and then you have the question of aggregation: whether these individual practices will be aggregated to the museum level once again, whether the museums really start, you know, at, uh, receiving more positive uh, outputs and outcomes and impacts at the museum level by doing things differently, by uh, you know, uh, involving stakeholders more to the, to the planning or implementing of the museum activities. And then finally, you go back to, to uh, you go back to uh, a macro level and then see really if the, at the societal level, the museums in Sweden or in Denmark, in Norway, or Iceland, you know, at the macro level, is the museum policy really, you know, changing or producing better impacts. So that is uh, something I wanted to share with you because I think it's very important when we talk about impacts. It's not only societal level. It's not only at the organizational level or individual level, but it's how you are able to connect all these levels together because that's how the really the impact is being created. And I will probably stop now. See, can you see the next slide? Oh, there's some, this is a pedagogically very bad presentation because it doesn't sum up, but we don't have time. There are all, you know, some challenges and stuff, but this is a kind of a background material. But before I finish, uh, I would like to ask, are there some, you know, comments in the chat field? I would maybe take one or two, two comments or questions if you have spontaneously i don't see any any uh, questions right now but uh, please if you're interested to to just you know one or two uh, instant reflections or maybe yeah. Lena, you can you can also pose a question if you, yeah. you feel we don't have i i i think the, the the slide uh, previous to to this one the the one that you showed this macro meso and micro uh, levels yeah. i think they are essential for us to understand i think this is the core of of evaluation and understanding how yeah. the 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 impact is is uh, created and i think this is something we yeah in, important for us especially today to understand the yes. original source is actually james coleman's the foundations of social theory 1990 oh. but James Coleman has all, all, only a macro and micro level, so I've added also the meso level. I, I think it's important to have 
organizations included. Okay, there's well, if no, if no I think questions, there's one, um, okay, please. But um, can you, um, Petri, can you see it, or maybe we do no, in that way? If you that, can read it. Uh, thanks, Petri, for uh, presenting the impact uh, fallacy schema. I have the experience that the, the movement is often bottom up to change starts with individual stuff, but the uh, fallacy happens when change can't move upwards to strategies yes. and policy levels. And this is by Merete Sanderho. That is a fantastic, you know, we, we could discuss that much more. It, you know, the change really can start at any any stage of this model. It can start at the micro level, as it all you know very often does, or it can start with the one you know very progressive, the new uh, you know innovative museum organization that starts doing things differently. It can start actually. My presentation started from a, you know top down and bottom up, but it can you know start from any any of these stages. Thank you so much. That was a very good good addition. And we have to finish now because I'm running out of time already. Thank you so much for inviting me and, and good luck with your work. It's very important work. Thank you.